So I started off this project by breaking down a couple of sheets of three quarter inch thick plywood, which I picked up from my local Home Depot. I then cut down those pieces of plywood into four inch wide strips. As I'm building the pavers on top of an original concrete slab, I began by laying down the four inch strips in a single layer around the whole perimeter. The reason behind the four inch strips isn't just because of the design, it also helps draining the rainwater away from the house. Any rainwater that gets onto the paver should find its way into the four inch gap and then drain itself away from the house using the drainage holes in the concrete wall. I also scribed the four inch strips around any bumps or inconsistencies around the perimeter. Once I'd got the four inch strips around the whole perimeter, we then divided the pad into five equal sections, each section being 43 and 1 8 inches. Once I was satisfied with the layout, I then doubled each piece up, giving it an overall thickness of an inch and a half. Making sure to overlap each joint, this will help lock the whole thing together. I fixed the two layers together using one inch wood screws. Once the two layers are all fixed together, I then had to lock it down to the concrete, using concrete plugs, my SDS hammer drill and 2 inch screws. As I went round fixing the form to the concrete, I also went round with shims and shimmed and leveled the whole form flat using a straight edge. I want to add that I leveled it flat but not level. And it's for a good reason. I wanted to keep the natural slope of the pad so that the rainwater naturally flows away from the house into the four inch channels. I wanted to keep the flow of the 4 inch strip down through the open face step. So before I form the face of the step, I return the form to the ground. I attach the corner together using inch and a half wood screws, making sure it's nice and square. I also made sure to stagger any joints, this will just make sure the structure is nice and tight and held strongly together. Trust me, you really don't want any form blowouts, I've experienced it and it sucks. I 
continued the same process on all ends of the forms which flow into the step. Once those are in, it was time to form the outside of the step. I cut a piece of paperback form ply, level to the height of the 4 inch strips. For ease, I also let it run past the length of the step. I did the same thing on the next section of the step, except I cut it to length, making sure the corner of the step sits square of the form. I made a mark at 43 and 1 8 inches. This will make sure that the step sits square and parallel to the ends. And then at that mark, I locked the corner together using wood screws, making sure it's square. I was worried about the side grain of the plywood making it difficult to pull out the form once the concrete is cured, so I applied tuck tape around the whole perimeter, making it a little bit easier to pull out. I also formed a 2 inch section around the post using the same techniques as before. I also attached a couple of 2x4s on the end of the step. This will help it give it that extra little bit of strength against the weight of the concrete. Once we were all happy with the form, it was time to pour the concrete. Because I forgot to press record on the rebar part of the first paver, we'll get to that on the second one. For the concrete section of this build, I got some help from the famous Dustin, or Dirty D as he likes to be called. As I pour out the concrete that we're mixing, Dustin moves the concrete around using his trowel. For the actual concrete, we're using a 3-2-1 mix. 3 parts stone, 2 parts fines or sand, and 1 part cement. For the ingredients of our concrete, we use standard Portland cement, Navijack which is a pre-blended material of sand and stone, and we added water to get the right consistency to which we wanted. For added strength, we also used a quarter inch fiberglass reinforcement called Admixture. Once Dustin had moved all the concrete piles around, he used his battery powered vibrator. Yep, I said it right, his battery powered vibrator to eliminate any air bubbles. It also helps move the concrete around to the areas you want it, up and around the rebar and below the mesh. Once the concrete was somewhat flat, we used a straight edge going from one side of the form to the other to get it nice and smooth ready for the stamp. So before we lay any concrete, we brush down a bonding agent. This helps strengthen the bond between the existing concrete pad and the new concrete we're pouring on today. To help strengthen the concrete, first we lay down a section of reinforcing wire mesh. And then on top of that, we lay down lengths of rebar running in different directions. As I continue to drop down buckets of concrete, Dustin continues to remove the concrete around and then level it flat vibrating any bubbles out as he goes. On the final paver, we made sure to lay the concrete in the actual step first, vibrating the air bubbles out in sections. We reinforced the corner using a couple of pieces of 90 degree rebar. We continue to add the mesh, rebar and concrete using the same techniques as before. Because I didn't want the concrete dead smooth in case it gets really slippery in the winter seasons, we rented these 4 foot by 4 foot rubber stamping mats. These are specifically designed for creating patterns and textures in concrete. They come in all different shapes, sizes, patterns and textures. We rented the biggest ones we can find with the most subtle texture. Once the concrete was dry enough to touch by hand and not pull up any residue, it's time to stamp. We sprayed the stamps down with a concrete releasing agent. 
and then carefully lay down the stamp square and parallel with the 4 inch strips. Without putting too much weight in one section, we essentially did the cha-cha and tapped the stamp texture into the concrete. We then carefully peeled the stamp up and then applied it to the next section, using the same techniques as before, making sure to evenly spread your weight. We also with a damp sponge flatten down any inconsistencies. The stamping really looks harder than it is. I gotta admit, I was really nervous and apprehensive to do this. I feel the key to get a perfect stamp in concrete is timing. You wanna make sure that the concrete isn't wet enough that the concrete pulls up as you pull the stamp up and obviously isn't dry or hard enough for the stamp not to work. Because these stamps didn't have a consistent pattern or texture, it didn't really matter where we laid it. You can see here that we started each end and then worked our way into the center, slightly overlapping each section. I allowed the concrete to dry for two weeks and then I removed the form strips. Because I tuck taped the two pieces together, it made it very difficult to pull each section out in one piece, so I ended up breaking it down into smaller parts using my circular saw. I continued to let the concrete dry another week and then I sprayed the form down with a concrete sealer. I sprayed it down evenly and consistently and then I removed any excess of a sponge. The concrete sealer helps repel any rainwater, and it also gives it the kind of satin, modern look. To help the 4 inch gaps look more appealing, I filled them with white decorative drain rock. Because the rocks had this kind of like white, dusty sludge on top, I drilled a bunch of holes in an old bucket. I then filled that bucket with the white rocks, and then washed out any of the white residue. I then consistently poured out the rocks in all the 4 inch channels. The rocks will allow the rainwater to drain away from the house, while also giving it that modern decorative look. For an area this big, we used the best part of 10 bags. I consistently poured out the rocks using the same techniques, and then worked the rocks in slightly below the top line of the concrete pavers. This way they don't kick up when you walk over them. And then this job is complete. I'm so, so impressed with the dramatic change this brought onto this house. The concrete pavers look fantastic and I don't think I'm being biased. 